What if I told you a cop wrote a thousand damn tickets and said it was one race of people? And then I said, all the tickets he wrote were fake. That's exactly what happened, put it up. Who in the hell has the time to write a thousand fake tickets? A Connecticut state trooper, that's who. Chris Melanson has been taken off the job indefinitely. Following an investigation which uncovered he had submitted 1000 false tickets listing many as Native American, but they were not. Maybe they didn't get the information to input it correctly. Maybe a lot of mistakes were made. And I also have a feeling some of the people there are doing this purposefully. And they are going to be held accountable. Somebody was yesterday, said the governor, Ned Lamont. Now, we've actually touched on this it was a while ago. The fake ticket scheme. Okay, um, it's allowable because of how their systems are coordinated or lack thereof. Makes it seem like a cop is doing his job. There's more. Um, this suspension, let's put it up, comes after an audit found that hundreds of Connecticut officers, hundreds, falsified tens of thousands of tickets. Some troopers may be facing criminal charges, jeopardizing their pensions and other careers in law enforcement. The audit found troopers falsified, get this, nearly 26,000 traffic tickets. And more than 32,000 were completely inaccurate. Ken Barone with the Public Policy Institute at UConn pushed for the audit after an internal investigation found four troopers had falsified tickets. There's no evidence these are real people. This has raised concerns about skewing racial profiling data. Now, why is this important? Because those tickets find themselves into a database. That database says, but look at all of these people of color, just doing all of these illegal things on the street. It creates a false narrative because of the false tickets. It also creates a false uh, suggestion that these individuals are working when they are not. There's more. It's also very clear at this point that federal authorities are looking into this as well. Maybe they're looking into this as Criminally prosecuting somebody, not just the troopers who did it, but the supervisors who allowed this to happen or perhaps encouraged it, said Mike Lawler, who is a criminal justice expert. And I will say this for the record, when we first did the story, it was clear that out of the few deputies who had been caught basically, this was a systematic dynamic. Because of all of the variables involved from the supervisor to how you enter the information in, to the fact that nobody gave a damn to check later. If the people were actually real people, those designs are there intentionally. They knew about it. As a matter of fact, they utilized it in order to continue to operate in this way. It was a cultural dynamic, cultural dynamic. So while we know about you know hundreds of cops, the hundreds of cops who engaged, I promise you this, out of them, there are those who did not engage, but they knew about it. They knew about it. And this is what happens when law enforcement officers simply um, act as if they're all part of a gang rather than part of a governmental agency paid for by the taxpayer. Your industry of policing is adversely judged because of your silence. Not because of bad men and bad women. It is because you all fail to say anything. There are bad men and bad women in every profession. When you say nothing, and you claim to be that you're good. You claim to be a good man or a good woman. You're not as good as you think you are. Your silence is definite. All right, share your thoughts. Yeah, it's so widespread, so out the open, quite frankly, Dr. Richie. I haven't seen anything like it since you know those people at the press conferences who do the fake sign language. Mm-hmm. It's, right. it, it's they're, it, they're flapping. Around. It's ridiculous, and you know, there's people at home who know you, you're fraudsters, that's and right. that's what this feels like. The only other thing I would say is the governor's statement. I. 
I forget his name, the Connecticut governor who said yeah. his spidey sense tells him that some of this may be done on mm. purpose. Really, governor? Really? Yeah. See, and that's the thing. You're governor of a whole state, right? You're governor of a state. If there's ever a position that should allow you to be free, to say the truth, to be a leader, it's the governor. The governor is afraid of corrupt ass cops. You gotta think about how extreme that is. The governor don't want to just get up and say the truth and say, we're gonna deal with it, we're gonna handle it. And individuals who engage in this practice against people who live in this state will be punished. He can't say that. He has to make it seem as if, well, maybe they just made mistakes here and there. 